In Minecraft, there are five main weapons to fight players and mobs with. All of them have unique functions, enchantments, and uses. So in this weapons guide, I'll compare them all to find out which one is the best in Minecraft 1.19. The five weapons in Minecraft are the bow, the crossbow, the trident, the netherite sword, and the netherite axe. And we're going to start off with the bow. Bows can be obtained by either crafting them or buying them from Fletcher villagers. Now to use a bow, we draw back on it and fire at whatever mob we're trying to get. But something really important to know about the bow is the enchantments that you use with it. Every weapon, in fact, basically every single enchantable item in Minecraft can have unbreaking and mending on it, so we're just going to focus on the PvP-based enchantments for these specific items. For the bow, we have power 5. Now this increases the amount of damage that is delivered from the bow, and I'll go into the exact numbers later. There is also flame. This is basically the exact same as fire aspect for the sword. This will make anything that you hit light on fire, which is an incredibly effective enchantment, especially for burning up mobs that you would, let's say, get a food drop from. Next there is punch, which is the bow variant of knockback. And if you hit a mob with a punch bow, the mob will be knocked back considerably. Finally, we have infinity, which you can only add to a bow if it doesn't have mending. Infinity makes it so that when you're using Using the bow, no arrows are actually consumed. One other interesting thing about infinity is then you cannot pick up the arrows that you fire, and they can't even disappear when you walk over them, they just stay there until they despawn. Now how much damage does a bow do? If you right click very quickly and shoot that arrow without charging up your bow very much, then it's only one damage, or a singular half heart. However, if you charge up your bow for 0.2 to 0.9 seconds, that charge will make there be 5 points of damage, so 2.5 if you fully charge your bow, and you'll know it's fully charged because it'll stop drawing back and then you fire like that, then your damage will be anywhere from 6 to 11. You may be wondering why it is a differing value. That's because the damage with the bow is actually variable. So at the full level, it depends on how much of a critical hit you'll get. The chance of getting a critical hit is completely random. So for instance, hitting this skeleton here, we could be taking almost 6 hearts off of its health, or we may only be taking about 3 hearts off of its health. And the average bow damage at full charge unenchanted is 8 to 10 points of damage, so about 4 to 5 hearts per hit. Well, power 5 upgrades your bow, so anything you hit will give you anywhere between 15 to 25 points of damage, or that 7.5 hearts all the way up to 12.5 hearts. So in the end, the unique uses for the bow are firing tipped arrows. So for instance, these arrows of instant damage will make much more damage be incurred to the mobs that we're hitting than it normally would. And of course, there's tipped arrows of a lot of different types, every potion type. The other big advantage of the bow is not having to fight mobs close up but instead being a ranged weapon. Two other cool things you can do with a bow if you have the flame enchantment is to ignite TNT with it, or to blow up the TNT minecarts. Both of these uses of the bow are unique to its flame enchantment. What's your favorite weapon in Minecraft? Be sure to leave your answer in the comments below to see which one is most popular. Alright, well enough about the bow, what about the crossbow? You'd assume it'd be an upgrade to the bow in every way? Well, let's find out. So you can get the crossbow from it being dropped from the pillager mob. They also use it as their main weapon, along with half of piglins. However, another way you can get the crossbow is by trading with villagers. If you would prefer to craft the crossbow, place an iron ingot and a tripwire hook in the crafting grid. Place sticks like this and string like this, and that will give you the crossbow. With this item, you hold right click to charge it like the bow, but if you try and fire now, it doesn't fire, but it simply charges up the crossbow. Once it's charged, you can just simply right click again to fire at the mobs you're trying to hit. However, something that makes the crossbow very much more unique than the bow is the fact that you can load up fireworks. That's right, fireworks into the crossbow. These provide a large splash area of damage. So let's take a look at the enchantments that the crossbow has to offer. So to start off, we have the quick charge enchantment going up to quick charge three. It's fairly easy to assume 
assume what this does. Compared to the normal loading speed of the crossbow, the loading speed of the quick charge enchantment is much quicker. Beyond that, there is also the multi-shot enchantment, which is incredibly overpowered considering the fact that with only one arrow, you can shoot three arrows out of the crossbow. You'll notice you only pick one of them up. Those two other arrows act like infinity arrows, and this gives you a wide range to get your target correct. You can even fire multiple mobs at once with this, which is incredibly useful if you have a large crowd of mobs you need to kill. Now the other enchantment on the crossbow is mutually exclusive with the multi-shot enchantment, and that is piercing. It actually works a little bit similarly to multi-shot. For instance, right here we're able to hit through multiple husks at once as you just saw, not just one. And this is really great if you do have a big crowd of mobs, as a damage from one arrow can be super efficient, going all the way up to piercing four. So what is the damage given by the crossbow? Unlike all the other PvP weapons in the game, there are no specific enchantments which give us better attack damage. The damage is anywhere between 7 to 11 points of damage. That would be an average of about 9 or 4.5 hearts average per shot. All the specific uses of the crossbow really are tailored to fighting multiple mobs at once or group mob combat. The average of the firework is 11 to 18. This is definitely a large amount of damage and it is much more than you would get with the arrows. So that could be all the way up to 9 hearts of damage. However, the average on this is not that many. The average is 14.5 points or a little over 7 hearts of damage. It is also possible to use tipped arrows with the multi-shot crossbow as you can see. And so because of that you can maximize the effect of one tipped arrow. But overall I would say the crossbow's uses are for any scenario in which you want to have a large field of damage or fighting multiple mobs at once. On to Minecraft's only aquatic focused weapon, that is the trident. You cannot craft the trident. However, what you can do is you can get it from Trident Bearing Drowned. In Bedrock Edition, it's fairly common to get Trident Drowns. It's also fairly common to get the Trident from the Drowned when they die. However, in Java, that's exactly the opposite. It's actually incredibly difficult to get the Trident from the Trident Drowned in Java. The Trident has a total of four enchantments that are exclusive to it. The first enchantment we're going to look at is Impaling. This works completely differently in Bedrock as it does in Java. In Bedrock, any mob that is in the water will have extra damage when hit with an impaling trident versus a standard trident. However, in Java, any aquatic mob will gain more damage when it is hit by the impaling trident, meaning impaling is only really useful on things like drowned, maybe pufferfish, and guardians, elder guardians in Java edition. Whereas in Bedrock, if anything's happening underwater, you want that impaling enchantment. The next enchantment is loyalty. This fundamentally changes how the trident works. As standardly, you'll throw it down, it'll just sit in the ground like that. However, if you throw a trident with loyalty, once it hits the ground or its target, it will fly back up to you and eventually go into your inventory, giving you a sort of returning weapon, maybe boomerang like. Next, there is the channeling enchantment. If it's thunder and you throw your trident at any single mob or entity, a lightning bolt will be summoned, hitting those mobs. Now, something interesting you may have noticed is that we're in the desert, it's not raining. But you can tell by the sky that it is the thunderous weather. And so what's really interesting about that is that you can summon the lightning bolt no matter where you are as long as you're inside of the overworld if it is thundering. The final enchantment we have does work with impaling but does not work with loyalty or with channeling and that is the Riptide enchantment. Riptide's main use is as a way to quickly travel through the water, sort of making this strange swirling effect as you shoot through the water, but also, as you saw right there, we hit a fish and damage was incurred to that fish, killing it. Now because of this, you can use it to kill things that are underwater or even near underwater. Now one really cool thing about this, if you're in Java, is if you have that Riptide trident in your offhand, and you have a weapon in your main hand and you hit a mob, the damage effect works with the item that you have in your main hand. Alright, so what is the damage of the trident? For standard melee attacks with a trident, the damage of that is 9. You can do critical attacks. And so with that critical attack, it is 13.5 points of damage, 
or a little under 7 hertz of damage for one hit. For the ranged attack, it is 8 damage, and there is no variability with that. Impaling 5 adds 12.5 points of damage to any attack with a trident. That means a melee attack on aquatic mobs or mobs in the water if you're in bedrock is now 21.5 points of damage, or over 10 hertz of damage, whereas a ranged attack is about 10 hertz of damage as well, only being one half hertz of damage less. So the ideal uses of the trident are on underwater mobs. And let's fly away from using the trident a bit and go on to a more traditional weapon of the sword. The sword is made with two diamonds, or whatever other material you want to make your sword out of, and a singular stick. Now the sword can also be combined with a netherite ingot to make a netherite sword. The sword is a fairly basic item, however something to be aware of is the fact that you have to be very close to things when fighting with the sword, which can make it dangerous when fighting certain mobs. Of PvP affecting enchantments, there are seven that are able to be put on the sword. First of all we have smite, and what this will do is this will make there be extra damage to all undead mobs. There's also sharpness, which goes up to 5, that works on every single mob. Next there's also bane of arthropods, which increases substantially the attack damage on arthropod mobs. Next once you've chosen either sharpness, smite, or bane of arthropods, we have the knockback enchantment. The knockback is great on things like creepers or really any mob you do not want to have close by to you when you're fighting them. So let's say if we're going to hit this piglin right down here, and we hit the piglin, it's going to be knocked back incredibly far like you saw right there. Then there is fire aspect, which works basically the same as the flame enchantment does on the bow. The fire aspect enchantment is great on things like hoglins, maybe pigs cows, really a lot of farming mobs, because when you kill something with the fire damage effect, you'll notice that their drops are cooked. Next we have the only enchantment that is exclusive between Bedrock and Java, that is Sweeping Edge, which is exclusive to Java Edition. Now Sweeping Edge is something that really levels up the abilities of the sword. If you have a large horde of mobs that you have to deal with, you'll notice with that Sweeping Edge effect, multiple mobs are hit at the exact same time, and that's because 75% of the main mob's damage is attributed to the mobs that are also hit on the side. So looting is the final enchantment exclusive to the sword. Basically looting is the equivalent of fortune, but for a sword. So for instance, when let's say slaying this hoglin, when the hoglin is killed, the number of pork chops that it drops will generally be a lot higher. For things especially like wither skeleton skull hunting, you definitely want looting on there. So what's the damage of this weapon that has so many enchantments on it? Well generally, the damage is 8, so that would be 4 hertz of damage with no enchantments. And hit on the way down, the damage is leveled up to 12 or 6 hertz of damage. For sharpness, that's 11 for non-critical and 15 for a critical hit. And for smite, that is 21.5 for the the standard hit, and 24.5 for the critical hit. The attack speed of the sword is 1.5, which is fairly fast, so you can rebound very quickly, and the recovery time is only 0.624, which also means if you miss hit, you can re-hit a mob very quickly. The uses for this weapon are definitely in close, fast-paced combat, as well as mobs you want to get a lot of loot from, and scenarios in which the enchantments on the sword would be useful. Also, if you're on Bedrock Edition, the sword is much better than on Java, and that has to do with the axe, which we're going to be talking about next, as we'll say goodbye to the sword for now. The axe is created if you craft it, with three material and two sticks. This could, for instance, be gold, maybe iron or diamond. You can also buy axes as well as swords from the villagers. If we put the axe into the anvil, there are four enchantments for the axe that affect the way that it works. The first one is efficiency. Now axes can disable shields, and there is a 25% chance of this happening, or a 75% chance if you're sprinting. However, with the efficiency enchantment, per level of efficiency, that adds 5% to the chance of it being disabled, which means that if we're sprinting and have efficiency 5 on our axe, every single time we attack a player, its shield would be disabled if it has one. Just like the sword, the axe can have the Bane of Arthropods enchantment, the Sharpness enchantment, or the Smite enchantment. The Sharpness enchantment also, something I didn't mention earlier, it does work differently in both versions. In Bedrock, it's a lot better, adding a very decent amount of damage per level, whereas in Java it's not even half as effective, but still sharpness works against all mobs, whereas smite doesn't. Now if we put smite on this axe for instance, it would then work similarly to a smite
Smite Sword. You can also put Bane of Arthropods on an axe if you want to. So what is the damage for the axe? Well, if you're using a netherite axe and you hit something in a non-critical hit, as you can do critical hits with axes, then that will inflict 10 points of damage. If you're doing a critical hit with an unenchanted netherite axe, then that will give you 15 points of damage, or about 7.5 hearts. Now a critical hit with a sharpness enchanted axe will give you the damage of 18. A non-critical hit, the damage is 13. And if you have a netherite axe, you can get the highest of all time damage from a standard tool, and that is 22.5 if it's a non-critical hit. However, if it's a critical hit, you can have 27.5 points of damage, or a little under 14 hertz of damage with one hit, which is of course incredibly overpowered, although it does only apply to the undead mobs. Now the attack speed of this is only one, meaning it attacks slower than the sword does. That's one of the reasons outside of things like looting or knockback that an axe isn't necessarily as good as a sword in terms of all combat uses. Also, its recovery time is slower, so let's say we hit a mob incorrectly, the amount of time it takes for that to rebound is going to be longer than that of a sword, meaning our combat cannot be as fast-paced. Now, something incredibly important to note is the fact that axes are very different in Bedrock Edition. In Bedrock, axes are not super good because basically their damage is one point lower than it would be for a sword, so take the damage of a sword and make there be one less damage on there. That is the amount of damage for an axe in Bedrock Edition. Definitely nowhere near as strong as they are in Java, but overall in a little bit slower paced combat, as well as fighting a player with shield, PvP in general, if you want to have a slower but incredibly strong close range weapon, the axe is your go-to. And now for the final analysis, what is the best weapon in Minecraft? The results are in. The best long range weapon is the bow, thanks to its power 5 enchantment affecting all mobs and its incredible damage. Also how easy it is to get early game and its intuitive use. Next for the best late game weapon we have the sword. For things like the looting enchantment as well as let's say knockback 2 or maybe the sweeping edge. There's a lot of uses you'll encounter late game for the sword that really make it indispensable as well as the fact of its quick action. Oftentimes late game you want to be very careful with what you do and you don't want to die from not being able to react quickly enough to a scenario. Next the winner for the best early game weapon is actually the stone axe or really the axe in general. The reason why is that the stone sword, which is something that you'd be making extra on top of the stone axe anyway, considering the fact that generally players will make a stone axe to get themselves trees more efficiently at first. This stone sword has a damage of only 5, and the stone axe has a damage of 9. In fact, that means that the stone axe has a higher amount of damage than the netherite sword does, which is incredibly crazy, but it's true, meaning you definitely should make a stone axe in your survival world when you're first starting out. Although if you're in bedrock this is not the case, and so you just want to make a stone sword there. Now for the most damaging weapon, the winner is also the axe, although in this case not the stone axe, but the netherite axe, as of course the netherite axe with smite can go all the way up to 27.5 points of damage, as the next closest one, which is a power 5 bow, can only go up to 25 points of damage at the most luckiest chance, with the average being much lower than that. The axe is definitely the best weapon if you're considering the amount of damage that it causes. And finally, the best weapon for large groups of mobs is the firework crossbow, considering the fact of the massive amount of splash damage that it causes, especially if this is combined with the multi-shot enchantment, Killing massive crowds of mobs is incredibly easy if you have on you the crossbow. I hope you enjoyed that combat guide. Be sure to smite the like button. I'll see you later if I survive being a living pincushion. Goodbye.